Okay, so, so happy you made it to part two. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you nine ways on how to walk away from homosexuality, what that looks like, and let's get into it. So the first way to walk away from homosexuality is to accept Jesus Christ in your heart. To accept Jesus Christ into your heart. This is so important and so monumental. Why? Because when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're making the beautiful, beautiful um, acknowledgement that Jesus Christ is not only your Lord and Savior, but that he has forgiven you of all your sins, that you now will repent and follow him instead of um, going back into the world and following the world. So that is going to be my number one. My second way is to get baptized 1000%. Find a local church, um, whether small, medium, or big, and find, um, even if you're in LA, go to the Mosaic. I went there before, um, or I think Reality Church, or some of these other churches that are really, really as strong in their Bibles and in the scriptures and Jesus's way that really truly believe that he is the one true living God, the whole, believe in the Holy Trinity, just really biblically sound. And you're, wanting to get, you're gonna wanna get baptized as soon as possible. Why? You're gonna wanna get baptized as soon as possible because with baptism, again, you are making the acknowledgement that when you go under that water, you are dying to yourself, you're dying to your sins, all the shame and the guilt and the hurt and the pain, all dying in that water when you get dunked in that water. And then when you come back up, you are a new reborn child of God. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter how dark or deep or bad or whatever you've done or whatever someone's done to you. It doesn't matter. All that falls to the, to, to, the, <laughs> to the floor of Jesus Christ, okay? To the feet of Jesus Christ. So that's gonna be my number two. My third way is to get Christian counseling as soon as possible. Um, whether that is actual professional Christian counseling from an actual professional Christian counselor, right? Or somebody within the church or a friend or a family member who can disciple you, right? And to do counseling that way, somebody that you trust that you can um, begin to... Uh, uh, be very honest with your past and what you've done so that you can begin to pour out these different things that you've been going through or that you went through, um, trauma, drama, um, hurt, pain, et cetera, et cetera, um, all these different things so that you can begin to start walking through what you've gone through, processing it, and then being a victor over it, right? Not being the victim anymore. You are not the victim anymore. You are the victor. Trust me, I went through this process. It is hard, it was crucial, but you know what? At the end of the day, I'm so grateful for the body of Christ and also my Christian counselor and my family, my in my immediate family, who I was able to pour into and just be honest with and just say what I needed to say to get to this point of not only being fully honest with myself and my, my um, the issues and different things that I went through, but also being able to now help everyone else. Obviously, this is a this is a YouTube Christian ministry ministry, right? So it's like here I am. So that is going to be my number three. So my fourth way is to find a local church church as soon as possible. Find a local church as soon as possible. Um, whether this is again small, medium, or big, find a local church that you can start to grow in and um, have support in. Now make sure that this local church is biblically sound. Where this is why I say read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible. So you are going to begin to notice which church is biblically sound and which church is not biblically sound, okay? Because when you're reading your own Bible, you will begin to weed out who are kind of like on the false prophets or, you know, more on the surface Christianity, right? Versus who are the in-depth, serious, mature Christians who are spreading and preaching the word of Christ, right? So that is going to be my number four. Let's get into my number five. And you guessed it, and you guessed it. Number five is reading your Bible. Read your Bible, read your, read, read, read your Bible, read your Bible. You must be very, very aware of your Bible and the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom that it holds, the Word of God. Why? Because the more that you read, the more that you're, be, you're going to become more mature in Christ, okay? God is going to be able to speak to you in ways that you never thought that he was going to be able to speak to you. And starting in the Gospels, right, by, by the way, Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you are going to hear literally from God, Jesus Christ, right? He's going to be speaking to you and from his ways, right? Because the Old Testament was Moses' law, which is very, very hard and heavy. I do not suggest you starting in the Old Testament just because, again, their ways were very, again, very heavy, very hard. Um, a lot of things you that, that were done in the Bible that was 
uh, you know, and it's just very, very hard to read because it's very heavy. But I will say start in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because this is the love, 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 love of Jesus Christ, right? But just know that Jesus is not just old love, right? He's also judgment. He has a fine balance, right? As we are to mirror Jesus, we also have a fine balance of this as well, right? Because we do love, but then there's also the truth that's very heavy and real. That's not always going to be people pleasing and not all joyful and not all peace sign and just hippie-ish out. No, 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 no. This is all a part of it. It's a, it's a balance, a happy balance of both, right? So you're going to want to read your Bible, starting Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Even if you just stayed in there and you just study that for the next like six months, bravo, because you're going to get a good solid foundation of Jesus Christ and what he's trying to say to you, but also the ways, the commandments, the morals, the values, all these different stuff. And you're going to get the best foundation of life to mirror Christ. Um, and how you are going to begin to start functioning. When you mirror Christ and your identity is in Christ, that's how you function, right? We are to mirror Christ. So that's going to be my number five. Let's get into my number six. My number six is that you're going to want to get into a local community group or a, um, a Bible study of some sort weekly, right? Um, in my church, we do community groups, which is basically a community group. And, and I think we have around you know, over 20, something like that, all very small. So it just basically takes a church, whether it's medium, I mean, small, medium or large, and it just makes it even smaller because you're doing life with people, right? So with um, community group, you're going to be in community with these people, whether if it's 10, 20, 30, um, whether if it's Zoom or in person or both. And you're going to be um, talking about whether whatever the last message was from your pastor or wherever you guys are in the Bible. And you're going to be talking about different things, um, using scripture and, and, and just doing life. Life together and talking about many different things that are that are pertaining to this plus you get to pour out right especially with you specifically if you're coming out of this specific sin you're going to need support really badly so you're going to want brothers and sisters that you can talk to about this right um and have them love on you pray for you um be there for you support you etc cetera, etc cetera, in this time of restoration and healing and all that stuff or in, in addition i would like to add to you could also get into from a christian perspective only um a christian like you know recover like a homosexual recovery program or something like that and you know what I'm saying like something like that which is very similar I guess to kind of like the community group or um, the Bible study group but it's even 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 more directed towards this specific sin to help you to give you the tools to, to um, to finally walk away from this, but then also the aftercare of it all. And also make sure you check out my video on spiritual warfare. It's right up there because you're going to need this, th this breakdown because when you come out of sin, especially a strong cold, um, which most of the homosexual lifestyle is a strong cold, you are going to need this spiritual warfare tool bag because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against powers, principalities. Um, it's a spiritual world. So there's different things and schemes, right, that the enemy knows and he knows all everything about you. He's going to try in many different ways to get you back into that sin of homosexuality, but then also get you even worse than you were before in many other sins. That is his whole plan. So you cannot do that. You cannot have this moment and then go back into that. I, at least I'm praying that you do not do that. It might happen, um, but God is going to still be there for you either way. But the point is that you try to not do that. Um, so you're going to want to check out that video ASAP because a lot of people don't talk about this in the Christian world. They do not talk about how the sins and the, and the enemy comes to even attack you harder, but he will try to attack you even harder. But you're going to be stronger and get more strong and more mature in Christ with these steps that I'm giving you. And make sure you check out this other video too, the 22 dispositions that we are to have as Christians because, again, this is also mirroring Christ. So anyways, that's going to be my number... What number is that? Number six. Let's get into my number seven. So my number seven is to test every spirit. You're probably like, what is she talking about? Just basically what this means is that you are going to test people in the Christian realm. So a lot of times when people become new to the faith, when they get when they when they get baptized, God sets them on fire like never before. I still feel that fire. I'm still burning, burning, burning. But like there, but I do will admit, right? Not admit, but like the deeper truth of that is that I was even more burning, like super excited, 
just like just ready to just do whatever God told me and I still am obviously but like just really lit up and like I still get like that sometimes um, but not all the time I have like a healthy balance of it now but I will say that there is definitely sheeps and wolf clothing okay I mean excuse me there's wolves and sheep clothing in the Christian realm okay there is there is there is high functioning people that are not for your good in the Christian realm. So this is why I say test every spirit because people are dealing with all kinds of stuff and brokenness still too. And sometimes people spiritually manipulate you. Sometimes people do different things, but do not get um, frustrated with this. Do not get um, overwhelmed by this or feel you know, down about this, um, but just know that that's the reason why we have a savior, right? We have a savior from all these different things and different spirits and all these different things trying to function in you and all these different sins and blah, blah, blah. We have a relief. We have an outlet, which is Jesus Christ. Um, but I'm not trying to say this to get you down. I'm trying to warn you to watch out for these specific, these specific people and to protect your heart, protect yourself, um, and do not give all and just do this and just give yourself to all these different Christians, right? right? Um, because a lot of them are Disneyland characters. I've talked about this before in many other videos. Actually, the 20 ways to break out of Hollywood, I talked about that in that video. You can check it out. I know most people don't have an inter entertainment pass, but I have definitely good, good fruit in that video that you can, um, per that can pertain to your life and you could use it in your life, right? So that is going to be my number seven. Now let's get into my number eight. So my number eight is that you find someone, at least one person, whether that's your family member, whether if that's a best friend, um, more so I would definitely highly suggest if you're a man to, to put your trust in another man. If you're a female, put your trust in another female just to keep it separate than that way. I'm not talking about a sexual way. Obviously, we're talking about homosexuality. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about having a relationship, um, like a good friendly relationship with another man who can pour into you in, in terms of discipleship and a woman with another woman, possibly eld older. But again, you just never know. You have to test the spirit, right? You have to test and protect your heart. Um, but to have at least one person, even maybe I would suggest a family member over maybe even people in the church because why? Again, you know I have the pros and the cons. I just have to be honest always um, is that there are people who are gossipers, right? There are people who are slanderers. There are people who are dealing with these some of these spirits that they have not really looked in the mirror about and see that they're functioning them so they are going to slander they're going to gossip they're going to talk about things that you have told them in um confidence and in secrecy and they're going to talk to somebody else and talk and that person's going to talk to somebody else and then they're going to gossip and slander etc you get what i'm saying maybe not slander per se but like definitely gossip so make sure whoever you're being discipled by um, is going to be able to, that you can trust them, that you can trust them with your secrets. You can trust them with, um, what you're going through. Um, and, and a good, good way to, um, try to figure this out, um, is to see their actions, right? Are they gossiping about other people? Check out my video about gossiping. Check out my video about gossiping. Um, are they gossiping about other people to you, right? Are they um, one way with somebody else and then a completely different way with somebody else, right? These certain things with the characteristic that you're gonna be able to find out whether if you could trust them or not. And also a really, really good tip to start out with, if you think that this person might be the one, like, you know, again, if it's not a family member that you really, really know, just drop, you just say a little bit of things here and there um, to this person um, that you don't mind somebody else he hearing. Don't say things that you really don't want anybody else to hear and tell this person, right? Um, because that way you can see over time, you know, if this person's going to tell somebody else or whatever. Um, and, and, and also make sure that you're checking in on the reactions. Are they really caring about what you just said to them? Or are they kind of like, oh, okay, cool. Like I got, are they really caring? Are they really trying to meet up with you, disciple you, um, you know, talk to you on the phone, email you, et cetera, et cetera. You get what I'm saying? So I hope that makes sense. So that is going to be my number my number eight. Now let's get into my final number nine. So my number nine and my final is to serve Jesus and not man. This is k -k crucial. Okay. Like this is super crucial because why there is a spirit of manipulation and control. And again, I'm just trying to be a hundred percent candid with you as, as you know, a deeper level of truth, right? The deeper level of truth again, is that people will take advantage of new 
Christians. People do, you know, especially if you're single, they will say, oh, can you help this? Can you help with this ministry? Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do that? And then by the time you like a few months or maybe a year goes by or a few years goes by, you're burnt out. Always put Jesus first and always serve for Jesus, not man. Um, don't allow people to spiritually manipulate you or control you or guilt you or guilt you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Please leave your comments below. Please leave your comments below because you know exactly what I'm talking about. When you're working in the church so many times, these um, Christian leaders, right, will guilt trip you and make you feel less than. And they, they because they have put the ministry first before their family, before their friends, whatever, God's work. I get it. It's an amazing thing. But again, it's biblical to always put your family first before the ministry, right? So you're always going to want to pour into your family first. Again, if you have other people in your family, don't go into the critical spirit or judgmental spirit, right? Of like putting people down and like and talking to them and putting them down. That is not love, right? But you could still say things in love and not put people down, right? So, but you're going to want to make sure that you're serving for Christ, that Christ is seeing you, that you're serving in the church and then you're in this ministry or whatever, but don't allow yourself to be guilted or bullied or threatened or any of these different things. Not really necessarily say the threatening happens, but sometimes it does, right? And in the Christian realm, I'm just being, I mean, you know, deeper level of truth, right? So just know all that and serve Jesus and do not serve man. So that's going to be my last and final tip to help you to get out of this spirit of homosexuality. Okay. So let's get into my final thoughts. So my final thoughts really are, again, this is um, this is a spirit, right? A spirit of homosexuality, right? A spirit of lust, perversion. And God sees you. He knows this. And I'm just speaking on behalf of everyone here. I'm so sorry if you had to go through, again, molestations or possibly even rape, incest, any of these really hard topics to talk about i'm so sorry that that happened to you um but most likely the reason why you ended up in homosexuality whether if you remember or not if this happened to you or not um not or not but if you remember if it happened to you or if you don't remember it, it that it actually did happen to you but you don't remember because you blocked it out um this is why big reason a big reason and gateway that the end the enemy was able to wreak havoc on you and, tr and and have put that spirit of homosexuality on you and lust and perversion etc 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 but i just want to say that i'm so sorry about that um but again with my final thoughts i just really feel um that you are going to love your new life not practicing this sin um not having that guilt, not having that shame, not having that loneliness, loneliness, not having the spirit of rejection, being even hopeful that now you could even move into a heterosexual relationship. Um, again, only sex in marriage, but heterosexual relationship and actually get married and have kids, right? If you didn't adopt or anything like that in your homosexual life, but it, that still can happen, right? You could still go into a heterosexual relationship and start your own family, right? Biological family. That's possible for you. If that's what you um, are desiring and God allows it to happen for you um but just know that this road isn't necessarily always abc right it's not that the steps are abc but the whole staying and staying the staying in a long journey you know what i mean and just being consistent and and staying that staying on that narrow path isn't necessarily always the easiest right there's going to be so many different temptations being thrown at you there's going to be so many different urges happening because you've been living this lifestyle for a while but the hope is is always jesus and he's the only one that can help you through this again when you have the urges happen check out my check out my video on masturbation this is not having to do with masturbation but there's some tips in there that you might want to take f take from that video to incorporate in this walk of these tips because 
um, there's urges and different things that, that come and different things like that. And within those urges, um, it's all demonic, right? It's all it's all of the enemy lying to you, making you think it's actually you, when really it's not you. It's a demonic possession, right? So with the urges and different things, immediately start praying, okay? Just take take a second, take a break or whatever, whatever you have to do to immediately start praying. Turn off the side, go off the side of the road, or if you're driving, you can pray at the same time, which you can pray anytime. I could pray right now as I'm talking to you. Do that as well. Depends on how you pray though. Um, but yeah, 100% start to pray immediately against those urges, rebuking and, and renouncing the enemy and everything that he's about with the spirit of molestation. Even if you don't know how to pray that well right now, just do the best that you can and just always say in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray by the blood of Jesus, the spirit of, of, of homosexuality get off of me right now and then the mighty name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus even a simple prayer like that even if you just said that and you repeat it repeat it repeat it eventually that urge will go away why because in the Bible says if you resist the devil he will flee right period in the story again I always talk about this specific um um not sin, but this specific, this specific spirit that was always around me, which is a spirit of depression. When I would resist, resist, resist that spirit fled. Like, and you could check out my testimony about that. But I just want to say all this for you, um, that I'm so proud of you and I'm so excited for you that you were doing this new step. This is amazing. Listen, you're not the only one that has gone through this. Me, I never lived full out that lifestyle, but I had moments and experiences with same sex situations and different things like that. And I know uh, so many other people who also had same sex encounters and different things like that, whether they were also molested and then it went into pornography and then they went into to again that's how they got into the same sex relationships i mean i have heard a plethora of stories but let me tell you all the people that i'm talking about right now all of jesus christ and they all do not practice that anymore they have said no to sin right no to sin and yes to jesus christ right so it is so um it is so um What's the word that I'm looking for? It is so accessible to you. Jesus is accessible to everybody, but it's but it's your time to like take up this whole experience and this journey with Jesus Christ. And I'm just so rooting for you and excited for you. And I'm trying to do the best that I can to warn you of these different things that happen to me within the Christian realm and then in just in my regular secular life to help you so that you do not stumble how I that how I stumbled in different ways, right? So I hope this all helps you. I love you so much. Um, and yeah, I'm rooting for you. Amen. Now let's say a quick prayer. So in the name of Jesus Christ, God, I just pray for my dear brothers and sisters who have taken this an incredible leap of faith to follow you and to say no to sin. You are so happy. You are overjoyed. You are you are just enthralled and so excited about this whole situation that they have tried or decided to do and dear lord i just pray for my dear brothers and sisters that um you are protecting them in the midst of this transition lord um and that you are with them and that you are loving them and that they feel your presence god the holy spirit fire i pray that they start to feel the holy spirit fire i pray even that the holy spirit fire um, it gets invited into their, their life right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, into their heart, their mind, body, spirit, and soul, Lord. Um, and I just pray, God, yeah, that you begin to use them in mighty, mighty ways, Lord. You've always had an incredible plan for their lives, Lord. And as we know, the the more that we say no to sin and the yes that we say, more that we say yes to you, Lord, and surrender our lives to you, God, the more that you can use us in mighty ways for your mighty kingdom. So I'm just so excited for my dear brothers and sisters who are, taking that leap of faith to say no to sin, no to the spirit of homosexuality, and yes to Jesus, and yes to you, Lord, and yes to life, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, family. Amen. All right, family, so that is it for me. Wherever you are in the world, feel free to like this video, share this video with your dear brothers and sisters that might even be like teetering and like questioning their 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 homosexuality and they're just trying to figure out why they're questioning it please send this video to them i feel like this is going to bless them and make sure you send part one and part two so they can get the full enchilada the full enchilada okay and make sure again that you check out De uh, beckett cook right and check out um changed movement.com these are going to help you tremendously because these are people like like um i wouldn't say myself but like these are just people these are people who once were full-blown homosexuals who live the full-blown homosexual lifestyle and now have been radically changed 
and radically moved um, and forever saved by Jesus Christ, okay? So share this video um, with whoever you need to share it with. Make sure you comment, right? Because the more interaction, the better. This is a YouTube ministry, Christian YouTube ministry. So we are here to uplift the body of Christ, right? Share your testimony, share where you're at. If you're confused and like you don't know why that why I'm talking about the subject or you're angry or whatever, just share, just share so we can pray for you. We can be there for you. We can try to help guide you to um, be with Christ the best that we can, right? Because I know there's prayer warriors on here. There's, there's, there's amazing people who are going to pour into you because again, this is a ministry. This is a YouTube Christian ministry. Okay. So I love you so much. Um, make sure you subscribe to this channel this YouTube ministry, make sure you hit that bell not notification if you never want to miss a video from me. I drop two videos a week, maybe even more depending on because you know the culture is out of control and I have to just say something. But that is it for me. I love you so much and I will see you in the next video. And I'm just want to say this really quick that my heart is just bursting with joy right now because I get it. Like I know so many people that used to be like full blown homosexuals that are now fully transitioned, whether they're still single and celibate it or they're actually married and have kids and have a whole new life I don't know what that's gonna what's gonna be the the situation for you but God does and he's excited and he's so overthrown he's he's just overjoyed as well like my heart is bursting for you right now in the best way so <sighs> amen all right I'll see you in the next video bye-bye for now bye-bye for now